In the previous two videos, I covered how to send message from L1 to L2 on Optimism and message from L2 back to L1. We now have all of the knowledge and the tool to send ETH from L1 to L2 and then back from L2 to L1. So in this video, I'll show you how to send ETH from L1 to L2 on Optimism and then send ETH back from Optimism back to L1. Here are the steps that we'll follow. We'll write a wallet contract and then deploy this on L1 and also on L2. We'll first send ETH from L1 to L2, check the ETH balance on the L2 contract, and then we'll withdraw from L2. Next, we'll send ETH from L2 back to L1, check the ETH balance on L1 contract, and then withdraw ETH from the L1 contract. So let's start by writing the contract. First thing that I'll do is declare the interface that we'll need to call between L1 and L2. And this interface is the I cross domain messenger. I'll copy this and then paste it into here. This is the interface that we used for the greeter contract. All we have to do to enable sending if is to change this function declaration send message and declare it as payable. And now we'll be able to send if to the cross domain messenger contract. Okay, moving on. I declare address as immutable and inside the messenger, we'll store the address of the I cross domain messenger. So constructor, we'll pass in the address of the messenger, address messenger, and we'll set this equal to messenger. Messenger is equal to messenger from the input. We want to enable this contract to be able to receive ETH, so I'll declare receive external payable. This will enable the wallet contract to be able to receive if that was directly sent into this contract. Okay, next we'll write a function that will send if from L1 to L2. And we can also use this function to send if from L2 to L1. So say function send. We're going to deploy this wallet contract both on L1 and L2. When we send if from L1 to L2, we will need to pass in the address of the contract that is deployed on L2. And when we're sending ETH from L2 back to L1, we'll need to pass in the address of the wallet contract that is deployed on L1. We'll call this address remote wallet. External payable. Payable because when we call this function, we'll also send ETH. And then I cross domain messenger, pass in the messenger address, dot send message. And when we call this function send message, we also send some ETH, so say value, we'll send message.value. Whatever amount that was sent when we call the function send, we'll also send it to the I cross domain messenger. And then what are the parameters that we need to pass to send message? Well, scrolling up, these are the parameters. I'll copy these parameters. Okay, target. This will be the address of the L2 contract, remote wallet message this will be the function that we want to call on the remote wallet contract since we're directly sending if we'll just leave this as blank so when the remote wallet is called we're not calling any function so the receive external payable function will be executed okay and gas limit let's say 200,000. okay that completes the function send so now when we call this function send this contract will forward all of the ETH that was sent over to the cross-domain messenger contract. The cross-domain messenger contract will relay our message and then send ETH over to the remote wallet. When the remote wallet receives the ETH, it will execute this code. Okay, next I'll create some helper functions for this demo. First function that I'll create is a function that can query the balance of ETH inside this contract. Say function get balance external view returns uint 256 and it will simply return the balance of ETH locked in this contract return address this dot balance okay once ETH is sent to this contract we want a way to be able to withdraw the ETH so the last function that I'll create is a function to withdraw ETH function withdraw external and for this demonstration I will not write any authorization code Anyone calling this function will be able to withdraw the ETH inside this contract. Boolean, okay. We'll use the low-level call to send ETH over to message sender. Message.sender.call value will be the balance of ETH in this contract. Address this dot balance. Okay, we'll just require that this function call was successful. Require, okay. 
call fail. Okay, let's try compiling the contract, hit Control S, and the contract compiles. The next step is to deploy this wallet contract on L1 and on L2. First, I'll deploy this contract on L1. So make sure that your wallet is connected to L1 testnet. This will be Sepolia. Then click on Deployment tab, and then click on Injected Provider. And then scrolling down, we will deploy the wallet contract. For the address of the messenger, for Sepolia, I'll copy this address. And then click Deploy. Confirm the transaction. Okay, once the transaction goes through, next I'll switch over to the L2 network. So this will be OP Sepolia. Click on Network, click on OP Sepolia. And then make sure that inside Remix, we're connected to OP Sepolia. And then we'll deploy the wallet contract. The messenger contract is this address. I'll copy this, paste it here, and then call deploy. Confirm the transaction. And we now have the wallet contract on L1 and the wallet contract on L2. I'll copy the addresses into here. And let's start by sending ETH from L1 over to L2. So we need to switch back to L1. Click on Sepolia. And inside Remix, make sure that we're back into Sepolia. And then to send ETH from L1 to L2, we'll need to call the function send and then pass in the address of the remote wallet. The address of the remote wallet is this address. So I'll copy this, paste it here. And let's send one way. So we're sending one way over to the L2 contract from L1 and then call the function send. Okay, the transaction was processed on L1. I'll wait a few minutes for the transaction to be relayed over to L2. In the meantime, I'll switch network over to L2. Click on OP Sepolia. Okay, I waited about three minutes. Make sure that you're on OP Sepolia. This is L2, scroll down. And let's check the balance of the wallet contract on L2. Open the wallet contract on L2 and let's call the function get balance. Then we get that the balance is equal to 1. This is the one way that we sent from L1. Next, I'm going to withdraw this one way from the L2 contract. So call withdraw and then confirm the transaction. Okay, the transaction was processed. Let's click on the function get balance. Call the function get balance and the balance is now 0. The next thing that I'll show you is send ETH from L2 back to L1. So inside the L2 contract, we'll call the function send. And for the remote wallet address, we'll paste in the address of the wallet contract deployed on L1. Paste the address of the L1 wallet contract. And let's again send one way. So here I'll put in one and then call the function send. Confirm the transaction. Okay, and the transaction was processed. Now, remember back in the video when we sent a message from L2 over to the L1, we had to do some extra steps. We had to copy the transaction hash and then run a node script. So here we'll do the same. I'll copy the transaction hash from MetaMask. So I'll click on send. This was the function call that was made. And then I'll copy the transaction ID. Remember in the greeter video, we wrote a node script that will relay the transaction from L2 over to L1. We use this node script to send message from L2 over to L1. This time we'll do the same and send ETH from L2 over to L1. To execute this script inside source, we'll need to call this command. Now inside .m file, I have my private key, which I will not show. So first we'll need to set the environment variable L2TX to the transaction hash that we copy. Inside my terminal, I'll set an environment variable pasting the transaction hash. L2 TX equals paste the transaction hash. Next, we'll execute this command. Say emb cat.emb L2 TX equals L2 TX. And the script is node source index.js. The script failed if the message cannot estimate gas. So I executed the script once again. I got a new error message saying withdrawal hash already been proven. So what I'm going to do to fix this error is I'll comment this code out, messenger.prove message. And then we'll try executing the script again. Execute the script, and hopefully this time it will be successful. And this time the script fail again with the message, withdrawal has already been finalized. Okay, so if we go back to our contract on L1, then we should have received one way, even though the script did not execute successfully. 
Back inside vMix, make sure that you're on Sepolia. And scroll down and let's check the balance of the contract deployed on L1. It's called a function get balance and surprisingly it has one way. This is the one way that was sent from L2 over to L1. So in this video we sent E from L1 to L2 and then from L2 back to L1. To send E from L2 back to L1 we executed this script. The script failed multiple times but by looking at the errors and then commenting out some of the code and then executing the script once again, eventually the transactions went through. 